This is my video for Cornfield Brutality held August 12th to 14th, 2022 in Iowa. The host facility for this event was the Big Springs Shooting Complex located in Searsboro. This facility features a 500 yard range, a 100 yard range, and two 50 yard bays. With this limited number of ranges available, we opted to make the match a four stage event rather than reconfigure the bays between days to increase the number of stages. The match was accordingly priced at about half that of other brutality matches. Shooting through the match multiple times in different divisions was allowed. Friday was the match for the iron sight divisions, including manual, battle rifle irons, and assault rifle irons. Saturday and Sunday was the partisan and armored division match. This is my armored division run shot on Thursday during the staff match. This stage is shot on the 500 yard bay. The shooter begins engaging a single 400 yard target from this rooftop prop. They must fire at least five rounds before they can move on. I'm using my 14.7 inch What Would Stoner Do rifle that has a permanent AFAB muzzle device attached to it. It has a SIG Romeo 8T and the Juliet 4 magnifier. After crawling through the hay bale tunnel, the shooter has to engage a variety of targets at 200 or 300 yards. This process will repeat as the shooter moves down range. Interestingly, when I checked the zero on this rifle when the match was over and I was back home, I found that the zero was off by 1.5 inches high at 50 yards. So what I'm doing in a lot of these engagements is observing my impacts and adjusting accordingly. Hey. The same series of targets is going to repeat hey. from this position as well. Every shot fired gives me more data on where I need to hold to make the hits, and I keep that in mind relative to the distance I'm collapsing as I move forward. This last tunnel is particularly narrow compared to the other ones and more difficult to crawl through. From this final position, the target sequence repeats again, and after I've engaged all those targets, it's time to engage the spinner. Spinners at this match are bonuses. The reason we went to bonuses on spinners is because we don't want people wasting magazine after magazine of ammo and not getting it. If it's a bonus, people can quit, but the people that are good are still gonna get the spinner. And as soon as one shooter gets the spinner, it is effectively a penalty for everyone else. Notice my respiratory pause when I send the shots and I inhale between sending shots. Getting the spinner and the minus 60 second bonus gives me the stage win in Armored Plus P and overall. Only one other shooter managed to get the rifle spinner on this stage. If you want to be competitive at brutality events, I strongly recommend you purchase your own spinner and train with it. This is the Cornfield Casarda drill. This range has a minimum safe distance requirement of 100 yards from rifle steel. So the kettlebell throwing is going to be side to side on this range, 25 yards down and 25 yards back. The shooter has the option of throwing a 36 pound kettlebell and doing double taps on three targets or throwing a single 64 pound kettlebell and doing a double tap on one target only. The ROs on the Casarda drill stage are known for their enthusiastic encouragement of shooters. So I ask that they do it in character for me as if they were commissars in Warhammer 40K and I was an Imperial Guardsman. Shooting off the bipod, being able to make rapid double taps meant that choosing the light kettlebell was the right choice. If you can't make rapid double taps, I think going with the heavier kettlebell would be the correct option. Keeping in mind that the Casarda drill is supposed to be 50 yards, stepping back to the line with the kettlebell if you overthrew it was acceptable. Let's move, guardsmen! Fire's your commissar and fucking shoot you! Move! I don't have much more commentary to add to this stage, so I'm going to let you just enjoy the encouragement of our commissars, I mean our range officers. Last one.
Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm 4th armored and 10th overall on this stage. Samuel Cowan you see at the top there is a beast that did this in two throws across the entire range going each direction. This stage begins with a shooter engaging a dueling tree. I'm using my Gen 5 Glock 34 MOS with Steiner MPS. Shooter grounds the pistol and has to pick up this log weight thing and carry it around. You don't have to put it over your head. I was just being kind of ridiculous showing off here. Now for the four further plates out. Another lap around with the weight. And then the shooter has to ground it again. And it's going to be dueling tree time again. Dueling tree. Yep. Yep. That's one good thing about brutality matches is coaching is allowed. You can interact with the range officers. You don't have to memorize everything and we're not going to penalize you for needing coaching. Even as someone who helps design these stages, I don't always remember exactly what I'm supposed to be doing in sequence. Now the shooter has to knock down plates on the plate rack, switching sides for every hit. It appears this PMAG 27 is not happy in my Gen 5 34. Spinner. Again, spinners are optional and it is minus 60 seconds if you get it. I don't quite have enough exposure to drive it through, but driving it over is easy. Good kill, good kill. I am third armored and sixth overall on this stage. Interesting data point, 52 out of 140 shooters were able to rotate the spinner. That is the highest spinner success rate that we have seen on a spinner at a brutality match. The stage begins with the shooter shooting on a plate rack. They then have to clear the pistol and get a single hit with that single round left on that plate in the center. Missing the plate is a plus 15 second penalty. The shooter then has to reholster, reset the plates, and carry these uh, strongman props across the range. They are about 50 pounds each. Shooter then draws, reloads the pistol, and engages the five pepper poppers with one hit each. Again, a single hit worth plus 15 if you miss on the static steel plate. Now it's tire flipping time. Reload again, another plate rack sequence, ending with clearing the pistol by removing the magazine and firing a single round at the static plate. Holster again, reset the plates, flip the tire back. This is essentially a self-resetting stage, so the props always end up back where they're supposed to start. Carry the strongman props back to the start, drop those, reload one more time, and it's plate rack with a single final hit on the static plate. Note that one of the plates didn't reset, so I keep the pistol down range, hand it off to my support hand, pull the rope with my strong hand, and then just knock down the remaining four. You just have to get a total of six. I'm 10th in armored and 15th overall on this stage. I definitely felt slow by the end of the day during the staff match. The humidity of Iowa is not something I'm used to, and I was pretty wrung out and dehydrated by the time we were done. In the end, I'm first out of 55 shooters in armored division and second out of 140 shooters overall. Getting that rifle spinner bonus on stage one is what made the difference for me. Winning my division is about the only time you'll see me express any kind of positive emotions, especially compared to Carl. I'd like to thank all of our range officers, the Brownells staff, and the Big Spring Shooting Complex staff for helping make this event possible and such a great success. Thank you for watching. Come back again for more action shooting and brutality match content.